Hi, OA Elementary. How are you? I have the last section of Rump, and I sure hope you've enjoyed this story. Epilogue. Your destiny is your name. For days and weeks, I woke with my name singing in my ears. It was a beautiful sound, music unlike any in the world. It made me wish that everything could have such a name, not just people, but animals and villages, roads and kingdoms, even mountains. When spring arrived, Red and I climbed as high up on the mountain as we could until we could see all the village and the roads, the kingdom and far away, just a faint glimpse of yonder and beyond. My whole journey was laid out before me. I imagined I could see the trolls in the eastern woods slurping sludge and maybe eating apples. I saw my aunts in yonder spinning their magic Ida making rhymes and cake. Someday I would visit them again and spin and weave with their magic. And instead of tying me up in knots, the magic would bring us together. But for now I was home, back where it all began, and I had one last task to fulfill. I'm going to give this mountain a name, I said. Why, asked Red. It doesn't need a destiny like we do. Yes, it does, I said. Everything in the world should have a destiny and come together and get all intertwined and tangled with our own destinies. Sounds like trouble, said Red. I smiled. It probably is. But what is destiny without a little trouble? And right then and there, I stood up and hollered the name of my mountain. The name soared into the sky and clouds. I could feel the magic of it spreading over the mountain sinking into the ground and running right up through my feet, bursting with power and fateful glory. A name is a powerful thing.